Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? And who's just breathless in all in wonder? The King of glory. Above all kings, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life so I could be set free. I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of Glory, the King of Glory, who rules the nations. With truth and justice Shines like the sun In all of its brilliance The King of glory The King above all kings And this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place that you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I see for All that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy. Amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. Oh, you lay down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, The wonder of how you brought Deliverance The exodus of my heart Cause you found me You freed me Held back the waters from my release Oh Yahweh You're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, 
You have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh. The cloud by day is the sign that you are with me. Fire by night is the guiding light from my feet. Cause you found me, you have freed me, held back the waters from my release. Oh, Yahweh, you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oops, you stepped into my Egypt, you took me by the hand. Marched me out of freedom into the promised land. Oh, I will not forget you, no. I'll sing of all you've done. And death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. As you stepped into my Egypt, and you took me by the hand, and you marched me out of freedom. Straight into the promised land No, I will not forget you, God I'll sing of all you've done And death is swallowed up forever By the fury of your love You're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory Hallelujah Hallelujah, you have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah, you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hi guys. As always, it's been so great worshiping with you. I know that a lot of us are itching to get back together, but I'm just still super thankful that we are able to worship together, to dig into God's word and talk about it in our small groups, even in the midst of a pandemic and social distancing. Um, that being said, I do have a little update. I know that a lot of you guys with the two services opening back up on Sunday mornings in the church have been asking about when NAS Youth will get back together. And so I have an exciting announcement. We are going to start to begin the transition to be back on campus. Um, that may look a little or a lot different than what we're used to on our normal Wednesdays, but uh, we do want to begin that transition of getting you guys back together, back on campus, back in the building. So this week we are continuing in our series, Quarantine at the Movies, and in just a minute we're going to be talking about Frozen 2, but I want to invite you guys instead of our normal Netflix party on Thursday nights, we are going to have a drive-in movie. And so this week, 
this weekend on Sunday, our church has been doing drive-in movies with different movies. And this week it is Frozen 2, which is what we're talking about. And so we want to invite you guys and your families um, to come in your car, come watch this movie, bring your snacks, bring your loved ones, and just hang out and watch this movie with us. Um, just enjoy this gorgeous weather that we're experiencing for summer. And... Just come hang out with us and watch a movie instead of online, even if it's cool with the chat room. Um, we just want to see your faces and enjoy a movie together. So come there Sunday. We'll post all the details and times on our Instagram, on our Facebook, uh, and just share the stuff that the NAS posts that they are sharing about this. But definitely would love to see you guys there um, in this part of quarantine of the movies as we begin to get back on campus as soon as we know more details about being in the building and having you know live messages instead of recorded videos um, I will absolutely let you guys know that because I am just as excited to be back together as you are uh, we just want to make sure that we're keeping everybody safe you guys our volunteers your families um, while we do it and while we prepare so without further ado we are gonna dive into our message for today uh, like I said we are talking about frozen 2 and I feel like, if I'm being honest, I watched this movie way later than everybody else. I feel like I was the end of the tale of people watching this movie. But that being said, quick disclaimer, boop, 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 boop. There will be spoilers in this message. So if you have not seen this movie, this is your warning. There are going to be spoilers. I'm going to talk about what happens in the movie. And so you can't get mad at me. And I say this because I had a conversation with my brother he and his wife were looking for a movie. We were FaceTiming and I definitely spoiled something for him about the Divergent, Insurgent, Allegiant trilogy. Uh, and he did not know. I thought he knew. He did not. And I ruined it. <laughs> so um, I, in my defense, those books and movies came out like six years ago. And so it's more on him than it is on me. So I'm warning you. So if you get mad at me, it's on you, not on me. But that being said, we're going to be talking about Frozen 2. And so I want to talk a little bit about the movie just to start off. Um, here's my hot take to begin. I think the original Frozen was better. I know a lot of people are real hype on Frozen 2. I get it. The music's good. But I like the first one better. And so today we're going to be talking about Into the Unknown, um, which is the biggest song. I feel like that's like the predominant song that was in all of the commercials, all of the previews, all of the different things for this movie. Uh, and it's Elsa singing, like, if I follow it into the unknown, if I follow this voice that's like this pulling, that's, I feel like I need to go and follow. Um, and what comes with that? And right now, I feel like we're kind of in the middle of the unknown. But at the same time, I feel like we've been in it. And now we're like, okay, now what's next? Like, We've gone through so much, like, what else could be into the unknown? Like, what else could we be pulled into? Like, you've seen the 2020 memes. Like, we know that this this year came out of left field. There's been so much things, so many things happening in our world. And especially right now, you guys have seen the protests. You guys have seen the riots. You guys have seen the political, all of these voices that are vying for your attention and your opinion, frankly. Um... In our world and so I want to talk about it because when we think about into the unknown when we think about the unknown there is probably one emotion that is predominant or that comes up fear when we think about the unknown some of you guys might get excited because you're like adventure and all of these new things and we don't know what's around the corner but for a lot of people fear is what accompanies the unknown Fear is what accompanies things that aren't mapped out, planned out, things that aren't expressed or go according to plan. Um, I know that that's definitely me in a lot of circumstances. When I don't know what's going to happen, there can be anxiety that, that follows and accompanies those kind of things. And fear is something that we see in Frozen 2. Fear is something that happens because I want to make sure I get this name right. <laughs> because, again, spoilers. There is a moment when in this movie, they find out that Anna and Elsa's grandfather, the king, meets these people call, called the Northaldra, okay? And these people have 
they're a tribe and they have this magical help from the forest, from these like spirits that are in the forest and they have this help. And Anna and Elsa's grandfather, who is the king of Arendelle, he's fearful. He's fearful because they're different and they have this help and he sees them as a possible threat. And so he does something that is destructive. He does something that is kind of manipulative, uh, deceptive, and it causes destruction. It causes the problem and the predicament that Anna and Elsa kind of find themselves in, in this movie. He sets the stage. He creates the problem. He creates the situation that Anna and Elsa have to figure out and navigate together. And it's all because he was fearful. It's all because he let fear override his thought process, override his perception, and allow him to make this kind of knee-jerk reaction. Because when we're fearful, like it makes me think of when you're at the doctor and you get the like thing, the little hammer taps your knee and they want to see if you kick, right, to see your reflexes. It makes me think of that, but it makes me think of the videos where people do like jump scares at their friends, at their loved ones, right? And there's different like there's a spectrum of reactions where people like just crumple on the floor and they're crying or they scream or they make a funny face or they drop what they're holding. And of course, there's that one guy that like goes and he like acts like he's going to like throw a punch him or something. We have these different reactions to fear because we think that in those moments, someone's coming for us. We think that someone is going to harm us, that they're going to hurt us, that they're going to do something that is going to hurt us. There's just like to bring harm, to bring hurt, to bring pain, to bring whatever to us. And so we react in a way that is either like crumpling to the floor or ready to fight. And here he kind of went to that route. He went the ready to fight because he let fear override and allow it to be a part of his choices and actions and creates a problem. And as I was thinking about fear, I thought of this verse and it's in 1 John 4. And if you go to verse 7, my little like topic at the top says love and God. And this whole section talks about God and love. It starts by saying, dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love doesn't know God because God is love. And so we hear a lot of that over and over again. And then you go to verse 18 and it says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear expects punishment. It's just like what we were saying. Fear expects punishment. It expects pain. It expects harm, but perfect love drives that out. Because fear expects punishment. The person who is afraid has not been made perfect in love. We love because God first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates a brother or sister, he is a liar. Because the person who doesn't love a brother or sister, who can be seen, can't love, or excuse me, who can be seen, can't love God, who can't be seen. If anyone says, oh gosh, the person who is afraid has not been made perfect in love. We love because God first loved us. We love because we've experienced it from God, because God is love, right? You guys are following me, right? God is love. God equals love. So us plus God equals us experiencing love. We experience love from who God is. And when we experience that, when we experience God, it's transformational. It changes us bit by bit over, like just we're overwhelmed by who God is, by the love that he is. And so it overflows out of us into other people. That's the, that's the goal, right? Just like our mission statement says, Jesus is the focus, community is our mission, and you are loved. And so we want that to be the cry of our heart. We want that to be what is overflowing from us into our relationship with others. 
But do you guys get what it says about love and fear? It says perfect love drives out fear. Because fear expects punishment. God is love and grace. And there are still consequences for our actions. There are still consequences for the mistakes that we've made. But do you guys understand that we don't have to prove ourselves? We don't have to, we don't have to do X, Y, and Z to earn God's love. And so here it shows that God is love. And when we experience his love, it drives out fear. And so in this movie, they have fear and it creates this predicament that they're in. And as I was thinking about fear, I just kept thinking about a lot of the situations that we see today. A lot of these, the protests, not necessarily the protests, but the riots, the things and actions that are following these protests, a lot of the interactions and conversations I'm having with other people just surround fear, fear for their loved ones, fear for their families, their friends, for themselves, fear Fear has been kind of an overarching theme in this season. It started with COVID-19 and now with the loss of life of George Floyd, of Breonna, like these people who have lost their lives through injustice, there is fear and fear is thick. And as Mason and my husband and I have been talking about these things, these events, talking about fear, Our hearts are breaking. And he thought of this quote, of course, because his Star Wars brain goes to Yoda. And Yoda says, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. And anger leads to hate. And hate leads to suffering. And he just kept thinking about that. And he talked to me and we started talking through this and we saw how true it is because fear and love, they don't go together. Perfect love drives out fear because fear leads to anger, leads to hate, leads to suffering. Nothing fruitful and productive can come from fear. And some of you may say, well, Bailey, self-preservation can come from fear. Sure. You can be afraid for your life in a situation and, you know, handle it differently. But fear as an underlying theme for your life, for the way that you engage in people, in conversations with people, in relationships with people, fear does not produce anything other than anger, hate, and suffering. Fear cannot produce the fruits of the spirit. Fear cannot produce loving and life-giving things, things of God in your life. And you might think that that's harsh to say, but we just went through the math. God is love. God is love. And perfect love, which is God, drives out fear. Drives out fear. There is no fear when we experience the love of God. And so the things that we're seeing, the fear that we are seeing in people, the fear because of injustice that has been in our world, the fear because of racism, the fear because of evil is real. And we need to understand that. But perfect love casts out fear. When we experience God, when we experience him fully, And we allow him to take us over, to overfill our cup so that what pours out of us is him. We experience perfect love. Perfect love that casts out fear. We love because God first loved us. He first loved us so we must love others. We must love them in a way that drives out fear. That puts love above fear. And again, I see this in this movie because, once again, spoilers, there is a moment when Anna thinks that Elsa has died and it wrecks her. She is falling into this like pit of despair thinking her best friend, her sister, 
her one last family member is gone. But she sings this song and she talks about how she needs to take one step. One step. She can't think about life without Elsa. She can't think about the future and all of these big milestone moments and all of these things without her, but she can take one step. Which leads to another step. Which leads to another step. Which will help her to continue on. But she can only take it one step at a time. Guys, that's how our life is. Some of you right now might be thinking of your fears, right? You might be thinking of your fear of not making the team. Your fear of not getting into the school that you want or not getting enough financial aid to be able to go to the school that you want. You might be thinking about being able to be back in the building for school next year, like in the fall. You might be thinking about racial reconciliation and how we can be a part of driving out that fear in our community, in our country. And those are big things, big things that we have to focus on, but big things that can feel overwhelming. And so if we're going to work towards embodying and reflecting love that drives out fear, that puts love above fear in our relationships, in our conversations, in the way that we live our life, we have to take it one step at a time. We have to do that one thing. Focus on that one thing. If you're wanting to make the team, focus on your drills. Practice more. Do what you can. Just this one thing that you can do today. Don't worry about the tryouts. Don't worry about whatever. Just focus on this one thing that you can do right now. This one thing each day. If you're worried about getting into school and, you know, scholarships, just focus on this one, this one test, this one subject that you need to improve on. Focus on this one thing. Focus on your one friend who needs love. Focus on that one conversation. Just have that one conversation with somebody. Read that one book that's going to help you understand just a little bit more where other people are coming from. Educate yourself a little bit more. Just surround yourself with people that are going to pour into you a little bit more. Maybe even eliminate one relationship so that you can grow and so that it won't harm you anymore. There are different ways that we can take one step. But one step is a lot more doable, is a lot more achievable, attainable than the big goal. If we focus on that, we can get overwhelmed and we can feel defeated. But just like Anna, we need to say, I can do this one step. I can do this one thing right now that'll move me one step closer, but that's one step closer than I was before to where I want to be. One step closer to true and perfect love that casts out all fear. One step closer to being a better reflection of God in my community and in my relationships. One step closer to celebrating God's creation and who he is and what he's done in my life so that you can experience it too. So I just want to recap. Perfect love drives out fear. When we experience perfect love from God, that is what spills out of us. And love in a way that is not contingent, that doesn't depend on other things. It's not dependent on other things. God loved us, not because of anything that we've done, not because of anything that we can do. Honestly, we've messed up so far. We'd be working the rest of our lives to try and even get to be worthy of the love that he's given us. But he loved us, so we must love others. Do you hear that? He loved us, so we need to love others. We need to show them this perfect love that drives out fear. When we lean on him, guys, there are still fears. I am still afraid of things in life. But when I trust in God and I try to be a reflection of who he is, that becomes my priority, not the fear. Fear should not be the motivating factor in your life 
like Anna and Elsa's grandpa. Like his motivation, his moving emotion was fear. Love should drive us to action, not fear. Fear causes reactions. Love causes action. I want to say that again. Fear brings reaction. Love brings action. And so as you guys go into your small groups, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the love that you have experienced in God and how it's causing you to act. Or maybe you're realizing that you're reacting. And so you need to look and kind of recalibrate how you're internalizing these, these situations, these fears in your life and how you want God's love to just drive those things out so that you can act and be a beacon of light to people around you. But I want to pray for you guys before we go. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this opportunity just to talk about your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the reminder that even though we don't earn it, we haven't deserved it, we can't do anything to be worthy of this love you gave it willingly and freely and would do it again and again. God, I thank you that you chose us to be mirrors, to be reflections of who you are in our communities, to show people how we can act, not react to things in our circumstances, in our lives, in our communities, but we can be an acting agent of who you are, where we are. So God, I just pray that you would be over the conversations in these groups. I pray that you would be with each of the students, with, with each of the leaders, but just that you would be in and throughout it all. And that going forward, we would seek to be love, to have that overflow out of us to others in these scary times. But God, we love you and we praise your name. Amen. Awesome, guys. It's been so great talking with you. I hope that your small groups go well. And I definitely hope to see you guys this Sunday at our drive-in watching Frozen 2. We'll see you later. Bye.